Hello and welcome to Fight News Now Extra. I am John Pollock alongside John Randine and we are bracing ourselves for 21 UFC fights this coming weekend. It'll start early, early Saturday morning, 2.30 a.m. Eastern from Auckland, New Zealand. This man will be watching them live. I will wait till Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> There's something exciting about watching fights live. You know, as soon as the results actually happen, you know, you set your DVR, your PVR, or you go online and, you know, check out the fights the next day. There's just not that anticipation because you can go to MMA Junkie or FightNetwork.com and find out all the results. So there's something exciting about watching it live, whether it be in Russia at 5 o'clock in the morning or watching this weekend at 2.30 in the morning. Very, very, very different. The, the main card of UFC 166 versus some of the, these undercard fights that we are going to see. One man in particular, I first wanted to start about uh, to discuss, and that is a man by the name of Deshaun Johnson. This guy's path to the UFC, pretty much full of just, it's like the tampons of UFC records. It is just padded to the most a ridiculous degree. You showed me once the greatest thing ever, the sure dog test, where you look at a guy's record, and this guy, hey, ton of first round not stoppages. All. Yeah, right. all but one fight of his has even gotten out of the first round. You click on some of these opponents. I mean, one guy's like 0 and 11. He's had two go arounds with that guy. And maybe this is the new way to get into the UFC because that threshold has certainly hit a certain level where, hey, it looks good. It's first round stoppages. Boom. You're now a UFC fighter. But don't tell me that his road to the UFC is colored by an impressive record. And that's the thing that, the, you know, of course, we, we still see the best fighters competing in the UFC. We know that, you know, Johnny Hen Hendricks is the best 170 pound fighter, kind of, of course, we, Robbie Lawler and George St. Pierre and Rory McDonald are all a part of that conversation. But for the most part, we know the best fighters compete in the UFC. But when you look at the undercard of the UFC shows, especially some of the fight night shows, you're just not getting that level of competition or the, that level of quality of fighters. There are plenty of fighters all over the world, whether it be Mohamed Khaledov or Ben Askren, that are quality fighters that should be fighting in the uh, UFC. This situation, he is a quality boxer. Our boxing uh, analyst, Corey Erdman, says he has legitimate uh, knockout power, has faced good guys throughout his boxing career. If this fight stays standing, expect a first round knockout. Is this the new, we've discussed this many times with Robin Black, is this the way that fighters should be approaching their careers of, hey, take the easiest fights possible and just make it look as impressive on paper and thus get, get into the door? Because for all we know, this guy, he may look tremendous in the UFC, but I don't think you could really take a whole lot from his road to get there in terms of the competition he's fought at this point. Is this, should this be a, a wise move for no. young fighters to be taking easier fights or at least attempting to? No, I, I don't think so. I think the fact is that if you're fighting, you know, if your opposition is of the lowest caliber and then you make the leap to fighting fighters at the highest caliber, you're going to have a rude awakening. You know, obviously there are some managers and some tra trainers out there are very, very intelligent and they can, you know, put their fighters on the right path. And some of those guys might be fighters with losing records. But, you know, when it comes to fighting for the big show, you have to be ready to have your, you know, to be facing off with some of the best fighters on the planet. You have to be talented, and you're not going to be talented if you're facing guys that are 0-11. As we jettison up the Auckland card, we've got Sola Pileli against Jared Rochalt. Uh, Jared Rochalt, he's just a very difficult wrestler who can get on top of you. And with Sola Pileli, obviously a lot of power, especially if he can get on top of you. Uh, in this particular heavyweight bout, is this going to be a question of conditioning here for Sola Pileli, which has been suspect in the past? I, I mean, I, for both guys, we looked at Rochalt's last performance, and it's not as if he was. Uh, Third rounds have not been kind to these two. Exactly. And it comes down to, you know, we're seeing kind of of a, a switch in, in mixed martial arts right now, whereas, you know, all was the wrestlers that were dominating. Now we're seeing wrestlers a part, is a part, wrestling is a part of everybody's game, whether, you know, it might not be you're initiating the takedowns, but the fact is guys are learning how to stop takedowns, and if they do manage to get taken down to the ground, they find a way to get back up. Will Rochelle be able to handle the punching power of Sao Palele? That's, uh, that's the question. It's headlined by Nate Marquardt returning to 185 pounds uh, after God gave him a ring on the phone and said, hey, bro, 
185, that's where it's at. He'll get to meet James Tahuna. Do you agree with God's critique? I do. I mean, Marquardt lost his last three fights at 170 pounds, so obviously it must be draining for him. Uh, he's, he fought at 185 pounds uh, throughout most of his career. This is where he feels the most comfortable. And I think it's a good matchup because James Tahuna is coming down. Who knows how that cut was for him? So I think it's a good move for Nate Marquardt. You add on top of that uh, the experience factor and just how talented of a complete mixed martial artist Nate Marquardt is, I think this fight's his to lose. Can probably retain a bit more holy water as well, fighting at 185 <laughs> pounds. We move over to San Antonio, Texas. It is headlined by, to me, uh, the highlight fight of all 21. That is Jeremy Stevens and Cub Swanson. This has all the makings to be an explosive firefight. I think there'd be very few complaints if this one goes five rounds. A very difficult fight to predict, and Jeremy Stevens completely found new life, cutting down to 145 pounds, unbeaten at the weight class, but Cub Swanson, his five fight win streak. There's win streaks and then there's quality win streaks, and I would say the latter is applicable to Swanson. Yeah, exactly. And when you look at uh you know, Cub Swanson and his victories in terms of quality opposition. Cub Swanson has, has faced and defeated maybe the bigger names. But Jeremy uh, Stevens, his skill set really speaks for itself. And I think, you know, the, this clash of styles is exactly what the casual fans are looking for. And that they're looking for two guys to take the center of the cage and use Muay Thai skills and their boxing abilities to try to knock the other one out. And if they can't knock the other one out, they're going to try to batter their legs. Cub Swanson's going to use his outstanding mixed martial arts boxing. I really can't wait for this fight. But we can't forget Ricardo Lamas, Hakran Diaz, as well as in uh, New Zealand, Hatsukioki on the card against Ch Charles Oliveira. I love it. It really is going to be a great weekend. One other, one other fight, uh, and I got to speak with him this week, is Calvin Gastelum, who's kind of th this quiet force right now at 170 pounds, a super deep weight class. But all of a sudden now, he went from this guy that last pick on the Ultimate yep. Fighter, wins the show, just overachieving, and now we've seen him coming off that win over Rick Story. He's impressive. now someone that, man, at 22 years of age, what is the ceiling for this guy? But he's fighting someone in Nicholas Musoki, and I asked Kelvin, it's like, what does this win do for you? And he didn't really have much of an answer. It's, well, it's a win, and I, and I want to win. It's not a fight that necessarily the opponent is going to really raise your game, but a great performance, I think it's going to keep a lot of eyeballs on Kelvin Gastelum, who is he's in that mix at 170 pounds. Well, you mentioned it. The guy's 22 years of age, so you look at the, the upper echelon of 170-pound fighters, you know, the Robbie Lawlers, the uh, Tyron Woodleys, the Carlos Condit, they're in their late 20s. They're at the top of the food chain. For Kelvin Gastelum, he's just got to put a nice winning streak together, and in the next few years, maybe he gets his crack at the title. But you got to win. That's the most important thing. 21 fights this Saturday, and we will chat about, well, at least some of them on Monday. But right now, we've got more Fight News Now Extra. Stay tuned.